started. Hello, Professor. Um, our topic for the project is cardiovascular disease prediction from ECG images. I have Aminash and Pooja as part of my team. So before we start with our uh, uh, determining steps, I will just give a quick understanding of uh, electrocardiogram that is ECG. Basically, ECG is a simple test that can be used to check human heart's rhythm and electrical activity. As you can see in the given image, it has 12 lead electrocardiogram EKG, and it is composed of uh, P wave, Q, RS complex, and T wave. The QRS complex is uh, often the three separate waves, that is Q wave, R wave, and S wave. Uh, the P wave is basically caused by the electrical potentials generated as the atria depolarize prior to the contraction. And QRS complex is caused by the potentials generated when the ventricles are depolarized prior to the contraction. Uh, we have the T wave, which is caused by the potentials generated as the ventricles recover from the state of depolarization. These characteristics are very important uh, for our future data feature extraction and the data engineering process. The reason why we chose ECG images for cardiovascular prediction is because uh, digital technologies have re revolutionized the signal analysis and automated diagnosis. And digital, digitized um, ECG signals have several advantages such as security, easy to store, uh, transmit and retrieve. Also, it is beneficial to convert biomedical signals such as electrocardiograms into digital form uh, that is for faster computerized investigation. This approach has few advantages. The first is instant results. Second would be no need to visit the doctor just to confirm the ECG report. Um, knowing the initial finding, a patient may consult further with the specialized doctor and potentially useful in remote areas of the world where doctors are scarce and require long distance travel. In addition to that, we have few disadvantages. Um, those are since we don't have large image data set to work on, the results may not be 100% accurate. And we do not intend to replace the present system. Rather, it is useful to speed up the process. We have done a thorough research and we have come up with the, uh, with the repository where we found the ECG images for our analysis. And, um, Based on the data set we found, we have used four categories of image classifications for our ECG images. Uh, those are listed, normal myocardial infarction, abnormal heartbeat, history of myocardial infarction. For the data preparation and pre-processing, I will hand it over to Avinash. Uh, thank you, Nisha. So, Pooja, can you please provide me with access then? Yes. Thank you, Pooja. Okay. So now coming back to the data preparation and the pre-processing stage. Once we got to know about the data sets that we are dealing with, where there were four categories of data. One correspond to normal ECG images of healthy persons and other correspond to people who had myocardial infraction and others with people who already have an history of myocardial infraction and finally and people who have abnormal heartbeat on each of these categories we had around 250 images so there were literally 1000 images in our complete data set so for the first part of property processing what we intended to do is we got all the ecg images for e each ecg image we first have to convert that ECG image into a grayscale image such that we can perform further processing on top of it. Also, each image can be of a different size and huge image size can affect our model processing and it may affect the a lot of things during the transformation phase. So what we did is we resize the image 
according to our needs and then once it is done what we did is we find all the divisions of an ecg mail literally what we are working on is 12 led ecg image so there are v1 to v6 leads and other lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 and the other avr avl and avf leads so what we are doing is we are dividing these leads into 12 leads so lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 up to lead 12 for our understanding once we divide all the leads once we get the necessary signal out of it we are then removing the grid lines out of it so here grid lines are of no use for us we just need the signal that we need for processing so once we get all the signal values we are then performing a lot of steps on top of it like at first uh, once we remove the grid line we you to remove the grid lines what we did is we use thresholding so we uh, we what uh, we just kept the foreground and the background distinction using thresholding where we use also thresholding to get it done once the thresholding is done once we have the threshold value and the thresholding is done we got a binary image out of it and once we had the binary image so we have an image in place but the thing is in the in, inside the ecg image there are a lot of text involved so avr v1 which are hard coded so we have to extract only the signal out of it and remove all the text so we were you doing a lot of contouring other stuff let me just showcase a collab for basic understanding of all the stuff so just let me go to the collab. okay here's the first initial collab that we worked on yeah here at first we are reading an ecg image from the user once the image is read we are dividing then as i said we are dividing the image into 12 leads and storing it in a list for processing so this is how it work, looks once the image has been uh, a single ecg image is divided into 12 leads once the leads are divided basically we had 13 leads in place but we use only the important leads the long lead we are not considering for our process then what we are doing is as i said we are removing the grid lines and perform thresholding uh, yeah uh, we also use gaussian filtering to for smoothing the image to get the signal a uh, higher priority from the background so we used gaussian filtering thresholding and other basic image processing step to extract only the signal from the image here we have the binary image from earlier we had an rgb rgb image which was counted onto grayscale now we have the binary image in place once we have the binary image let's i'm just plotting and showing a single image where we are using contouring to extract only the signal out of it so now we have only the signal out of it so once we have the signal we are going to perform uh, at first basically once we had the exact exact signal in place we are saving it into a csv file so we were first converting into a 2d signal basically a 2d array consisting of x and y points so once we had it so we thought is only the x points would sufficient for our processing since it contains the peak values of the image so we excluded the y value and and we got only the x value in a form of 1d array and what we thought is what, what let's try to normalize the image using minmax scalar such that the values are within a specific range such that it would be useful for further processing so used minmax scalar to get it done once it is done we have an image in place which can be done for processing so the one great problem that we faced during this step is was we are since we had a lot of image for our processing it was taking a lot of time since we don't have that much compute power so it, it took us a lot of hours to get this process done but even though we got the uh, all the data is done we it takes a lot of time so here we just have the functions for looping through all the files and all the files in a uh, in a google drive and extracting all the signals and uh, lead signals and csv values out of it so uh, this is what uh, basic processing of our project this let me go to the another slide so yeah the feature extraction and the data engineering part that's exactly what i mentioned before uh, once we get the contour image and extracted the csv file out of it we are combining all the lead signal values in a single csv file processing so prior passing to our ml model we have a single ec a single csv file which contains 
12 lead is uh, values of all 12 leads in the form of uh, all the x values in the form of columns uh, with around 1000 images in place so we have the train data set which can be passed into the ml model for further processing now puja will let you guys know about the uh, what, what was the ml model done and about the architecture and the deployment thank you avinash so uh, to start with, the output of the pre-processing step was a CSV file, which comprises of all the 12 leads. And as Avinash mentioned, all the uh, pr the predicted prediction label is Y, and all the other uh, features or attributes were taken as X. Then uh, moving ahead, initially we started with uh, the individual models, like we uh, took KNN, uh, logistic regression, SVM, so on, and we trained each model and saw performance accordingly. Then once uh, we understood that there were different, uh, like say, performance on each model, and in order to try the state of art, we just went with grid search CV and ensemble technique. So uh, why grid search CV? Uh, that is basically it, it tells us the or helps us to get the hyperparameter that is required for each basic model in order to enhance their performance. And also uh, why ensemble technique? Since we had uh, uh, seen different combinations of uh, performance or say accuracy in each of these models we just thought of stacking up three models out of the models that are listed here and we performed an ensemble technique so for our ensemble technique we used knn svm and random forest and uh, stacking all those three each of us gave prediction here uh, each of us gave the those predictions and the output or the say output of each models were then passed to a voting classifier so here voting classifier that we uh, used or say the method that we used for voting classifier is uh, basically a soft voting based that is it gets the probability from each model and which has the highest probability or which label has the highest probability probability will be taken as the final prediction. So with this understanding of the model that we used, uh, moving ahead. So I'll just go with the deployment and come back to the higher architecture. So I'll, this is how our uh, deployment architecture is. So whenever there is a change in the collab or any changes that we did to the source code, as and when it is pushed to the GitHub, there will be an auto trigger that is enabled because of the webhook uh, that we have. Uh, the same, like using Docker file, we you know, like build the container and that gets stored on the container registry. Then we will run that particular uh, container uh, on the cloud run. And that's how the user will be able to access our application. Now, coming back uh, to the higher level architecture, so the end application, or like say how user can use it. So once the user uploads an image to our web application that we hosted on cloud, all the necessary pre-processing uh, steps will be taken in place. That is uh, changing into grayscale, removing backgrounds, uh, so on. So once all that pre-processing is done, then it is sent to an ensemble model and the final prediction will be given out to the user as result. So uh, in like seeing the same in demo. So here is a link. Here is the demo of the project where initially I'll start picking each files of different types of abnormalities and we'll go through how the prediction goes. So to start with, I'll be taking a normal image uh, from the validation set that we have. So uh, this is the image that has been uploaded and we can also see the other pre-processing steps that we are doing. This is the grayscale conversion. Then we have uh, the divides, dividing the leads then this is how we we are pre-processing it wherein we are removing the background 
This is the extraction of those signals. And we are converting it into uh, one dimensional signals. Then on applying the dimensionality reduction, this is how the data will be. And uh, then this is the final prediction that we have got. Now I'm going to the different types of abnormal images. And it, the prediction is abnormal heartbeat. I'm going to the next category of abnormality. So again, this is a grayscale image. Then these are the different leads that we have. Then our pre-processing steps. after dimensional reduction. So it says it's MI. Going on to the last category. history of myocardial infraction. So this is how the prediction is. And uh, with all the different type of ensemble techniques that we have applied, our model accuracy is around 93% now. So uh, furthermore, we can increase the accuracy by uh, using CNN techniques where we can have like different layers and learning using those different layers. But for now, with the basic ensemble technique, yes, this is what the accuracy is.